Hello everyone, my name is Laura and I'll be taking you through the webinar today. In this session, we aim to give you all of the information that you need to get started with Sage Payroll. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover in this webinar. We'll start with an introduction to the payroll and we'll show you how to access and navigate the software. We'll cover how to set up, whether you are doing this as a new business or if you're moving from an existing software. We'll cover whether you're moving over at the beginning of the tax year or whether you're doing that midway through the tax year. So let's get started with an introduction where I'll show you how to navigate the software and give you a tour of Sage Payroll. So once you have logged in and you've set up your payroll, this is the screen that you will see. This is the summary screen. This screen will look a little bit different if you haven't set up your payroll yet, but we will cover that as we go through the webinar. The summary screen shows you when your next payroll is, it gives you some estimated costs, and it allows you to click the button to process your pay run. In the pay runs tab, this is where it will show your pay runs that you have already ran in the box on the right hand side. So any pay runs you've already completed are showing here and you can click on those for further information as well. In the employees tab, that will give you a list of your current employees. If you need to see any levers, you can tick this box at the top of the page and that will give you the option to see anyone who is a historical lever. If you need to create any brand new employees, you can click on create employee and put their information into here. Any mandatory fields are marked with an asterisk. From this screen, you can also make your employees levers by clicking on the cross. The year end tab will give you the option to run your year end reports. There is a drop down, so make sure that you do have the correct year selected. From the reporting drop down, you have a number of reports that you can run to show your values from each pay run. In the settings tab, you have all of your payroll settings here. So you have your payroll settings, any pay slip templates, and this is also where you can set up things like payments and deductions. You can also set up users from this screen. At the top of the screen, you have a help button. If you click on that help icon, that will take you to our help files. You can search for the subject you're looking for using the search bar, or you can browse on the left to find what you're looking for. At the bottom of the page, there is an option to get in touch. You will see that you can contact us via online chat and you can telephone or email us as well. So if you do need any help, that's where you can find the information. Throughout the software, you will see these green question mark icons. If you click on that, it will take you to the relevant help file for that particular area of the software. From the drop down at the top, you can click on manage business account. From this section of the program, you can amend your business information. You can change your direct debit method and you can also view your subscription invoices and you can manage your subscription from here too. So if I click to manage my subscription and then manage services at the top right, you can move through the different tiers of payroll in case you need to add more employees to your license. As you can see at the top, you can also add accounting to your registration, which means that you can toggle between payroll and accounts and process both from one login. This system does connect to ROS, so you will be able to bring in the RPNs when you process a pay run. So that was a quick tour and demo of Sage Payroll. Now we'll move on to the key features and benefits of the software. So firstly, the system is cloud-based, which means you do not have to install. At year end, we take care of all of the updates to the software for you. And you may say that there's been updates throughout the tax year as well. 
As long as you have an internet connection, you can access Sage Payroll from anywhere on any device. You can manage your subscription yourself from within the software, which is what I just showed you in the demo. That means that you don't have to call us to change your direct debit details or upgrade or downgrade your employee license when you need to. To save time when paying your employees, you can create a bank transfer in Sage Payroll. There are two e-banking options available in payroll, which we'll touch on a little bit later. If you have accounting and payroll, you can integrate both of these, meaning that your payroll postings are taken care of automatically for you and posted to your accounting software. So if you need any of your members of staff to have access to the payroll, you can give them access via the settings area of the programme. Our support team are here 24 seven, should you need help outside of the usual nine to five. We have lots of support options available. Just click on the help option at the top of your screen and then click to get in touch. Just a reminder on how you log in to your cloud-based Sage Payroll software. You simply go to www.sage.com, click on the login option at the top and choose Sage Business Cloud Accounting and Payroll. You will then be presented with a login screen and you will pop in your email address and password that you used when you initially signed up for the software. Once you do sign up, you will be given a few options to set up. We'll go through those in a little while, but for now, what we'll talk about is what you will need to set up your payroll. We've put together a checklist of information that you'll need to set up your payroll. The requirements do vary depending on whether you are a brand new company setting up your payroll for the first time, or if you have existing employees and you are moving your payroll processing to Sage Payroll. If you haven't already done so, you must register with Revenue Online Services to be able to submit from your payroll software. Registering with ROS might take a few weeks, so allow plenty of time for this. If you are a tax agent running payroll on behalf of an employer, you must enter your tax advisor identification number in the payroll settings, as this is a requirement of revenue. As you can see in the checklist, we have three options at the top. So we have new company, the two existing payroll options at the top show start of tax year or whether you're transferring over in the middle of the tax year. So first of all, we look at the employer details. You will need your employer registration number and that is mandatory for all types of setup. Then you will need to know your revenue reporting frequency and your payment method. If you are coming over midway through a tax year, you will need to know your last completed revenue reporting period. Then we go on to employee details. So you'll need to know the personal details of your employees. Things like the full name, address and date of birth. Regardless of when you are setting up your payroll, you will need your PPS number. The payroll uses this to retrieve the RPNs from ROS. So that is really important that you do have that and you set that up in the payroll program. If you are transferring from an existing payroll, whether that be at the start of the tax year or midway through the tax year, you will need to know what the employment ID numbers are for those employees from your previous software. You will need year to date information if you are coming over mid tax year. So that is what the employees have been paid and what's been deducted from them in the tax year. You will also need to know the employee start dates. And if you are coming over partway through a tax year, any lever information for anyone who has left the business in the tax year. So let's take a look at what's involved with setting up your payroll. When you first subscribe to payroll, this is the screen that you will see. So you have an option to migrate the data or to set up a new company. If you are moving from another payroll provider partway through the tax year, you should use the option to migrate your data. The reason for this is it gives you the options to put in the employee opening balances of what they have been paid so far in the tax year. The new company option should be used if you are taking on your first employees, or if you're migrating your payroll 
from an existing software at the very start of the tax year. So it is important that you know at what point you are moving your payroll, whether it's at the start of a tax year or midway through. The tax year starts on the 1st of January. So if you've processed any pay runs in a tax year, you would have to migrate the payroll. So we'll now take a look at how you'll set up your payroll using each of those options. We will start with the new company option. So just to reiterate, you would use this when you're taking on your first employees when you're migrating an existing payroll at the very start of the tax year, and this will allow you to enter your employees manually, and you do not have any opening balances to enter here. So let's take a look at this in the software. So this is the screen that you will see once you have signed up for your payroll software. We're gonna click on new company. And we have two steps to setting up. The first option is to set up your employee paydays. To do this, click on the link. This brings you to the payday calendar settings where you can set up whether you have weekly, monthly, two weekly or four weekly pay runs. In this case, I'm going to set up a monthly pay calendar. Click the option to set up monthly calendar. Choose the relevant option from the drop down. And then tell the system when your first pay run will be. You can tick the box to avoid public holidays and weekends. Then click save. If you do need to set up a weekly calendar as well, you can simply click on the option and fill in the details. Same with any of the other calendars. You can also click to view the pay calendar to see the upcoming pay dates. Click the summary and then click new company. As you can see, step one is complete. The next step is to add your employees to the payroll. Click add your employees and click create employee. You should then fill in the employee details. So let's start with the personal details. Once you've completed the personal details, you can move on to the contact details. It is best to put as much information as possible in the employee record. Any mandatory fields are marked with an asterisk. The PPS number is important and is used by ROS when you are retrieving the RPN. Please make sure you have the employee's correct PPS number assigned to them in the employee record. We can now move on to employment details. Once you have filled in the employment details, you can move on to the current tax details. If you have any of this information, please feel free to pop it into the system. However, when you run your first payroll, we will retrieve the RPN from revenue. This will include the PRSI, tax status and cut off information. Therefore, if there has been any updates from revenue, that will be included within the RPN. At the bottom, you have the option for pay document preferences. This is where you can choose how your employee will receive their pay slip. If you choose email, you will be required to put their email address in and pop a password in as well. You cannot email the pay slips without a password. So please make sure you fill in that information. In this case, I'm going to choose print. And I'm going to click save. That is my first employee set up. You can then repeat the process for as many employees as needed. Click create employee and set up your next employee. If we go to the summary tab, you can see this page has now changed. We have the information we need to process our pay run. So let's recap on those steps. First, you would set up your pay calendar. 
you can choose from weekly, monthly, two weekly or four weekly. You would choose the day of the week or the month your employees are being paid and you can view the pay calendar to check the pay days for the current tax year. When you come to process the payroll, you can amend the pay date if required. Then you need to create your employee records, setting up their personal details, contact details, employment details, and current tax information. Remember, you do have your pay document preferences at the bottom if you would like to send your pay slips via email. Now let's take a look at migrating to SAGE partway through the tax year. You should use this option if you've already processed some of the tax year in another system and you're moving to SAGE payroll partway through the year. You must migrate your data at the start of the tax month or quarter. So depending on how often you pay revenue, you should finish that pay period and that tax month or quarter in your previous software. And this ensures that when you submit your data to revenue, the values won't overlap with your old payroll system. For example, if you pay weekly and you have processed into the current tax month, you should process the remaining weekly pay runs of that reporting period in the old system up to the end of the month. You should complete your online submission to Revenues Online Services and then migrate your data to Sage Payroll at the beginning of the new tax month. When you migrate your data partway through the year, you will need to enter opening balances for your employees. So here's a list of what you'll need for each employee. You'll need their start dates, and if anyone has left during the current tax year, you'll need the date that they left. You'll need to know the earnings that they've received so far in the tax year. Any deductions such as PAYE, USA, and PRSI. You'll need any year to date information regarding benefit in kind and any pension information. You'll also need any LPT, local property tax paid. You can get this information from your previous software. Once you have this information, along with all of your employee details, you can enter your information into Sage Payroll. Let's take a look at that now. As you can see, we have the two setup options. And if we click migrate data, so as you can see, migrating the data does look slightly different to setting up a new company. The first thing that we need to do is choose the revenue payment frequency, then the payment method, and then choose the last completed revenue reporting period. This is the period that you have completed in your old software before moving over to Sage Payroll. So I'm going to choose month 11. Then we need to tell the system how often your employees are being paid. So in this instance, I'm going to select monthly employees and choose the last day of the month. If you have more than one frequency, you can choose more than one. Again, you can avoid public holidays and weekends by using this tick box. Once you've set up those details, you can move on to step two by clicking next. Now it's time to add your employees. Click add employee. Enter your employees details, starting with the forename and surname at the top, the personal and contact details below. Within the personal details, the employment ID is important. You need to make sure that the employment ID is the same as the employment ID in your previous software. Once you have filled in all of the information on the first screen, you can move to the middle tab, which is the tax details. Fill in as much of the information on this screen as you can. The mandatory fields are marked with an asterisk. You should be able to get the tax details from your current software. If you're unsure, please make sure that you have the correct PPS number in the record so that when we pull through the RPN, when you run the payroll, it can update those details for you. Once you have added all the information to the tax details tab, 
move on to the opening balances. This is where you enter what the employee has been paid and has received this tax year. It is important that you fill these details in and you fill them in correctly. All of this information should be obtained from your current payroll software. First, I will select paid this tax year and I'll fill in the information. Once those details have been completed, move on to the next tick box. Fill in the information for each tick box where applicable and then click save. You can then click next or you can add another employee. I'm going to click next and then click submit. And that adds your employee to the system. I'm going to click done. And that is your payroll set up. You can review and edit the data that you have migrated before you complete your first pay run. So I have added one employee. If I have another employee I need to add, I simply click on this link at the top of the screen to review, edit or further configure the migrated data. Click review or edit your migrated data and that takes us back to the first screen we seen earlier. If I click next, I am then able to click on this employee to edit their values or add another employee. It is advisable once you've added each employee to click next and submit. And just in case you lose internet connection, you have saved what you have done after each employee. Then you can simply go back in and review or edit your migrated data. Let's have a look at a few other steps you might need to take in payroll before you start processing. You can look into your payslip templates. So in the payroll settings area, you can click payslip template and choose from three different templates, depending on what you want your payslip to look like. You've also got the payments and deductions section in the payroll settings area. From here, you can set up your salaries, your basic hours, any hourly payments or salaried payments that you might need, including any holiday pays, bonus elements and overtime. You can also set up deductions from that area of the software as well. You can set up any additional users to the system by going into the settings and clicking user management. Please remember that if you are a new company, you will not be able to access ROS until you download your digital certificate. It is important that you keep your digital certificate in a safe and secure location on your machine. For further information about how to save your digital certificate, please visit the Revenue website. This brings us to the end of what we're going to cover in this Getting Started webinar. Now we'll take a look at the further support you have available to you. First of all, you have Sage University. If you'd like to learn more, we have interactive courses on Sage University. Please visit the website on screen and set up a login to access these. You also have the Help Centre. This is available from within your software using the Help button at the top of the screen. You have options to get in touch if you are struggling or you need some help and support with the software. At the bottom of each Help article, you will see the Getting in Touch link and that will take you to the page that you need to chat with us or call us, or you can even email us. Thank you for watching the webinar today. I hope that you have found that useful and you're now confident in how you can set up your Sage payroll.